Warcraft Monday, everybody. Welcome to Solo React Talk. This Monday, I'm going to be reacting to a video requested by Dewey Valdalen. Hope I'm pronouncing your YouTube name correctly there, Dewey Valdalen. Um, <laughs> yes, Dewey, the, Dewey, Dewey Valdalen has requested that I should react to Warcraft, Warcraft's most overpowered king made on the Platinum WoW YouTube channel. If you guys want to check out my other reactions to Platinum WoW's World of Warcraft content, remember the playlist card for the Warcraft Monday reaction playlist is going to be at the top right here. Just click on it and you'll be able to access them. If you want to check out the original video as well as Platinum WoW's YouTube channel, the links are going to be in the description below. Okay, let us start with Warcraft's most overpowered king. Yes, all right. Three, two, one, go. World of Warcraft is a fantasy universe, and in a fantasy universe, there has to be some kings. But in Warcraft, uh, all of them kind of suck. King Terranus Menethil, killed by his own son. King Rostakhan, died to the Alliance. King Greymane, Bruh. King Magni Bronzebeard, champion. And King Varian Wren, who... But you know, Greymane is cool. Greymane is actually cool. He, he didn't die. Yes, he's turned into a wargen, but you know, he's cool. Okay, that was kind of cool. But he also got stabbed by two random mobs and then turned to dust. Go then, go then, go then, go then, my boy. The unworthy have not yet learned of my power. Thunder and lightning. When the thunder echoes, all other kings, queens, emperors, and rulers tremble in fear because Lei Shen, the Thunder King, is easily the most powerful and impactful ruler Azroth has ever seen. Myths of Pandaria. Mm -hmm. His history is critical to understanding the ancient legends of Warcraft lore and has remained a fan favorite in the lore community. Let's find out why. Before we talk about the Thunder King, I need to pay my bills and let you know you're not safe. No one is safe. Unless you have NordVPN, the sponsor of today's video. If you're like me and you use the internet, to look up obscure lore facts about your favorite fictional characters that no one really cares about, or you uh, just, just use the internet, you are at risk from third parties and your internet service provider spying on your activity. That's why I use NordVPN, and there's a deal right now to get a two-year plan with one additional month free with a huge discount. Another great thing about using Nord is it grants you access to region-locked content on the internet with just a click of a button. Did you know that you can get access to Dutch Netflix, which has Lord of the Rings? Really? It does? Right now. Wow, that is geweldig. Ik heb Nord VPN nodig. Click the link down below and secure your privacy and maybe even explore Middle Earth with this two year plan with one additional month free with a huge discount. Nord is so confident in their product that there is also a risk free 30 day money back guarantee. So go to nordvpn.com slash platinumwowvpn. Thanks, Nord, for sponsoring this video. The ad is now over. The Mogu were once a race of stone who served the Titans during the ordering of Azeroth. After the curse of flesh transformed them into fleshy, mortal creatures, everything changed. Wait, who initiated the curse of flesh? Was it a, a keeper? Was it... A witch or a wizard, who did the, who did this, you know? With flesh came the emotions of weakness, fear, greed, and anger. That Was it the old gods, maybe? Hmm. That drove the Mogu into a constant state of internal conflict. You could say that they are Azeroth's version of the orcs. Yeah. This period of time was known as the Age of a Hundred Kings, a time where the southern reaches of Azeroth were thrown into a constant state of warfare as the Mogu struggled to overpower one another. 
Long ago, their Titan Keeper Master Ra Den had just disappeared, leaving his servants aimless, confused, and desperate. Maybe Ra Den was disappointed in you guys. You're not really living up to... Yeah, you're not really living up to what you'd expect because you guys are infighting, fighting amongst each other for kingship uh, and just destroying each other instead of working together for future battles against the Burning Legion or, uh, you know, the Void. Maybe that's the reason why Raden just gave up on you guys. Because I've never heard of uh, Keeper Tear giving up on his... Um, giving up on the dragons, you know, the dragon flight. Yeah. That was over a millennia ago. And still, some Mogu desperately cling to the idea that he may one day return. <laughs> Li Shen was raised during this time of conflict. He learned the art of warfare from his father, who was one of the many warlords who fought for power among the Mogu, even in his young life. Lei Shen saw the Mogu's infighting and squabbling as a destruction of their race's great potential. The young Mogu was forced to confront this firsthand as he watched his father be murdered by one of his closest advisors. Backstabbed. Instead of taking his father's place, Lei Shen chose exile and decided to wander the lands and meditate on the failures of his kind. Typically in Mogu culture, it was customary that when a warlord was killed, their rivals would then slay all of the slain warlord's family to snuff out their lineage. But when the Mogu saw Lei Shen simply give up and walk away, they assumed that he had gone mad and would not pose a threat ever again. Wait a minute, so if Lei Shen left, what about his family? I mean, it couldn't just be his father and Lei Shen, right? I'm sure he had siblings, right? And a mother? What about them? Did he not think about them before he left? Hmm. Wow, okay. But oh, how wrong they were. As Lei Shen traveled, he pondered the folly of his people and their circumstances. Where did Master Ra go? Was the Curse of Flesh a part of some master plan the Titans had created? Was this all just a test to prove the loyalty of the Mogu? Were the Titans they worshipped waiting for them to be enlightened by some new discovery? And the question Lei Shen pondered the most, how has World of Warcraft been out for 17 years and there is still no ducks in this game? Ducks? Uh, okay. Maybe there'll be a duck race, <laughs> you know, <laughs> coming with uh, two legs and and wings, of course, but then they also have some arms. Yeah, you, we might have a duck race one of these days in World of Warcraft. That conundrum he was most befuddled by. <laughs> Lei Shen realized that if he seek the answers to his inquiries, he'd have to find Master Ra. For years, Lei Shen searched and... Sh For years, Lei Shen... Sh for years, Lei Shen searched endlessly to find his master once again. Eventually, he found an entrance to a hidden vault north of the Vale that once held great importance to the Mogu. Within the stillness of the vault, Ra Den sat quietly. The Titan Keeper gave no reaction to Lei Shen. The Mogu questioned him asking what the purpose they now had. Why had he just stopped contacting his servants? Was this all according to plan? And where are the ducks, Master Ra? Where are they? Days and weeks passed and not a word was given. Lei Shen then realized that Master Ra was not quietly contemplating some master plan. He had just given up. This enraged Lei Shen. Master Ra was supposed to be a literal instrument of the Titan's will, but now he had just abandoned their purpose to do literally nothing. <laughs> Time grows short. Lei Shen's words had finally gotten a reaction out of Ra, and the Titan Keeper led him to see the reasoning for his absence. Yeah, this ought to be interesting. The two traveled to the Thundering Mountain, a hostile, cursed place no mortal has ever traveled to before.
There is no hope. A coming threat will consume us all. What, is he talking about the Burning Legion? Within the depths of the mountain, Raden showed him the last remaining essence of the slain Titan Amanthul. The Pantheon was dead. All How is that possible? They're not dead. If they were dead, you guys would realize that. You guys would know that immediately. You know? Azeroth would be consumed by the Burning Legion almost immediately. If they actually died, you would know. All of the Titans were killed thousands of years ago. Sargeras had killed them all and either his army of demons or the horrors of the void would consume all of the universe. Raden, you've been fooled. I don't know who put a spell on you, but definitely you've been fooled. And I'm also quite surprised the other Titan Keepers haven't come to Raden and discussed this with him. He's just here sitting alone, uh, you know, contemplating this new reality which is fake because the the titan pantheons are still alive uh yeah i'm just quite surprised that the other keepers did not come and visit him and talk to him hmm. raw den had simply given up after he found out all the titans were dead and didn't even bother telling the mogu it was pointless to fight back the titans had lost and their downfall was inevitable you only delay but Azeroth is also a titan, right? It's a baby titan, but it's still a titan. And if Azeroth uh, finally awakens, then the titans, or should I say one titan, will be alive. And that titan might protect other future titans be, uh, for them to become born. So, you know, your duty is still here. You know, your duty only ends when you die. And your duty is to make sure that Azeroth is safe. And that means commanding the Mogu. Why are you faltering on your duty, Raden? You have such a cool name. Pay the inevitable. Raden hoped that showing this truth would make Leishen give in to the same despair, but it actually had the adverse effect. <laughs> Lei Shen found Master Ra's despair as pitiful. He had hidden the truth from the Mogu. He let them fall into madness. He let them fall into a constant cycle of pain and misery after his abandonment. Ra Den was no demigod. He was a faulty tool who lacked the vision of their masters. If Yeah, he is a faulty tool who's lacking the vision of his masters or his creators, that's true. All of the Titans were dead and their servant refused to continue the Pantheon's glorious legacy, he would do so himself. Did he just rip out his heart or his lungs or something? Oh my gosh. It is said that Lei Shen ripped the very heart out of Ra Den. The power was like nothing he had ever felt before. No longer was he a servant. He was now a god. Lei Shen's most devoted followers to the Thundering Mountain and dropped to their knees once they saw his glorious new form. They said, Wait, so he consumed the heart of um, Raden? Just like Gaurosh, when he also consumed the heart of Yasaraj. Okay, interesting. But I don't think Raden is going to manipulate and control uh, Lei Shen's body, like how uh, Yasaraj was kind of controlling Gaurosh's body. Yeah. Hmm. We will call you the Lightning King. Lei Shen simply scoffed in response. Lightning strikes in an instant and is over in a flash. But thunder, thunder, thunder proclaims the coming of the storm. Thunder quakes the skies long before the lightning strikes. 
true. And thunder echoes in the hills long after the lightning's power is spent. It is thunder that sends animals cowering and fills the hearts of peasants with dread. True, true. Let thunder be my herald, so that my power is felt throughout the land. I will be the Thunder King. Excellent. <laughs> excellent, excellent. I like that. I like that for you. I like that for you. Yeah. Thunder King. Let's go. Kneel before the Thunder King, you worthless peasants! My power cannot be contained! The Thunder King now demanded that all Mogu bow before him. Once again, their race would be the defenders of Azeroth, and they'd continue the Titan's legacy and restore order once again. You know, if he actually succeeded, I think Azeroth would be heavily prepared, heavily protected uh, for any threat that comes from the Burning Legion. Because the Thunder King is actually quite, you know, powerful and dangerous. And the Mogu are also no pushovers. So yeah, you know, I could see it happening where Azeroth would be protected by uh, the Mogu, led by the Thunder King, against the forces of the Burning Legion and Sargeras. Uh, well, in terms of the Void, it depends, you know, on the old gods, if they're still going to be imprisoned or some of them are going to escape somehow in some fashion. But ultimately, I think Azeroth would be secured. It doesn't matter who protects Azeroth, as long as it's protected. I think the Titans understand that also. You know, it doesn't matter who is in control of the planet, as long as the planet is protected from any sort of threat from the Burning Legion or the Void. Yeah. If that protection descends into corruption in terms of the Void or they make deals with uh, the Burning Legion, um, then definitely they will have to be replaced. But whatever happens uh, you know, in the internal politics or the wars that happen on Azeroth, that doesn't matter to the Titans or even to the Keepers for that matter, you know. Their threat is at a galactic level, not at a local level. So, yeah, if the Titan King controls all of Azeroth, they'll be fine with that, I think. I think. <laughs> Lei Shen utterly crushed all Mogu who defied him. The fortunate ones were killed mercifully, and the unfortunate were locked in chains for centuries until they were properly broken. The Thunder King's iron fist struck fear into the hearts of the Mogu. Some thought he had claimed the powers of the Veil, or was a literal Titan reborn. But soon their fear would turn into devotion when Lei Shen displayed his godlike powers. One of the Thunder King's first of many accomplishments was mastering the use of a Titan device called the Engine of Nalak Shah. With this Titan machinery, he found a way to revert the Curse of Flesh in some of the Mogu and restored them to their pure forms. Under the Thunder King's rule, no land was left unconquered, as his army claimed every corner of the Vale. This was the beginning of a prosperous new empire for the Mogu, in a time of darkness for the other races surrounding the Vale. He was not just a king, he was a conqueror. How many other kings uh, throughout Azeroth's history can actually claim that they were a conqueror? Yeah, not that many. Breakable flesh! You will make a fine slave! The first to feel the wrath of the Mogu was the Jinyu. Jinyu. Okay, they look like mermaids or mermen. All right. The Jinyu realized that they had no chance of fighting Lei Shen's empire alone and allied themselves with the Hosen, a race. Hosen. Okay, the Jinyu and the Hosen. 
groups of mischievous monkey people who were known for their effective guerrilla tactics. I am, um, uh, no pun intended there. <laughs> the alliance proved to be effective as for 40 days and 40 nights, the monkey and the fish people held back the Mogulot. But on the eve of the final battle, the Hosen betrayed them and pledged our loyalty to the Thunder King in hopes of getting preferential treatment. Of course, the Thunder King would never help such pathetic creatures. I, I mean, if you can betray your allies, you're going to betray the Thunder King as well. I would also destroy you. <laughs> no, 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 I, I can't have people like that in my kingdom serving me. No, 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 no. One day, one day, you'll just also, you know, stab me in the back. Uh-uh. This left the Jinyu severely outnumbered, but they did not go down without a fight. During the skirmish, Jinyu waterbreakers would conjure bubbles of water and lift the Mogu into the air, only for them to plummet to their deaths. Make a demonstration of these invaders, such that all nations tremble before me. Their resistance was impressive, but ultimately futile. One of the Mogu generals named Haequin outsmarted the Jinyu and used their very own fishing spears to wipe out the last remaining resistance, and soon after they were fully conquered by the Thunder King's army. Wait, so are the Jinyu still existing in the current day World of Warcraft or on Azeroth, or are they extinct? And also the Hosen, are they extinct or are they still some of them alive? Wow. This guy committed genocide. <laughs> yup. <laughs> These insects do not know their place. Lei Shen was so humored by the embarrassing display that they made of the Jinyu, and he crafted his general 100 of the finest golden spears to praise him for his fine work. With the monkey people and the fish people conquered, the mo- <laughs> Sushi. <laughs> no, no, no. No, Platinum Ball, you can't do that. <laughs> you can't do that. Ogu marched up north to Kunlai Summit, where the Panda people fled to hide from the Thunder King's army. Ah, Pandarians. Me. <laughs> the Mogu marched to the foothills of the mountain. With his godly voice, Lei Shen shouted, Choose the greatest warrior among you, and have him face me in one-on-one -on -one combat. Should I win, your people will submit to my rule. Should he win, I shall leave these lands in peace. Why would you make such a deal, um, Lei Shen? Why would you make such a deal? You have the forces. Just obliterate the enemy. Why deal this with a one-on-one -on -one combat with the greatest fighter? I know you're strong, right? But this is a bit arrogant on your part. You could just dist you could just crush the Pandarians like how you did with the Genu and the Hosen. Hmm. Oh well. <coughs> Excuse me. Do you not know who I am? I am Lei Shen, the mother Thunder King. Answer me now. Silence filled the air until a booming voice echoed from the peaks of the mountains, whose power rivaled Lei Shen's. Challenge accepted. From the top of the mountain, the August Celestial named Zulin. August Celestial. <clears throat> I think I've seen you before. Well, I've heard August Celestials. Um, yeah, the gods of the, the Pandarians. Okay, Jen, the White Tiger. The White Tiger descended downward, and the two godlike beings locked themselves in combat. They fought tooth and nail in a battle that lasted. 30 whole days. In the end, Zulin succumbed to the Thunder King's might. But he did not grant him the mercy of death. Instead, the victorious king imprisoned the tiger and chained him at the peak of the mountain so he could watch for... 
Why is Lashen's head going bobbing around like that? What's going on? <laughs> All eternity and bask in his failure as the Pandarans served Lashen's empire as slaves. Man, this reminds me of Aku and Samurai Jack's father. You know, when um, Aku imprisoned Samurai Jack's father on some sort of black tree that he created. And he made him watch as he destroyed uh, Samurai Jack's father's, you know, hometown or kingdom, I should say. Yeah, it was a kingdom. He made him watch as he destroyed it. Yeah, oh, this is terrible. The Mogu used the blood, sweat, and tears of the enslaved animal people to expand their empire and created structures like the monolithic Serpent Spine Wall. You see, the Pandarians are slaves, but we don't see the Genu. We don't see the Hosen. Yeah, they must have been driven to extinction. Damn. Okay, one more thing. You might know that the Pandaren actually worship three other gods, and these group of gods are called the August Celestials. Yeah, well, it's only briefly stated in the lore, but Lei Shen beat the crap out of the other three. <laughs> the Thunder King's rapidly expanding empire drew notice from other civilizations on Azeroth, specifically the Zandalari trolls from the east who saw great promise in the Mogu. Zandalar forever. One of the high priests named Zula Thara. Zola Thora, Zandalari High Priest. Where's the Zandalar King? He should be the one coming here, not a priest. Maybe the High Priest is like the ambassador. The King doesn't want to send himself, maybe. Approached Lei Shen with a proposition. The Mogu held incredible power on Azeroth, but the- Oh no, I see a Hosen right there, serving oranges, I think. Oh, okay, so the Hosen are still alive. Somewhat. Trolls held the knowledge of the world. With their empires combined, they could fully dominate every inch of Azeroth with ease. At this point, there was no empire that came even close to the combined might of the Zandalari and Mogu armies. Despite this, Lei Shen, being the asshole that he is, did plan on enslaving the Zandalari when they were no longer useful to him. But as time went on, both parties learned that they were invaluable allies and were a great help to one another. Lei the enemy of my enemy is my friend, an alliance of convenience. Lei Shen even told Zulthara of a ritual to revive his spirit if he was ever killed. Revive my dead body, step two, do some magic ritual stuff, IDR. Wait, let me just zoom in, guys. Sorry. I need to see this. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. How to raise your boy, <laughs> the Thunder King. Step one, revive my dead body. Step two, do some magic ritual stuff, I don't know. Okay, step three, question marks. Uh, step four, I'm alive. Yeah, okay. Sounds simple enough. He never told his own Mogu Empire about this ritual because he knew how power hungry they were and how they could never be trusted with such critical information. Yep. Meanwhile, in the southwest, in a tropical land called Oldham, the. Oldham. Oh, Oldham is with that, uh, that, um, that, uh, that forge, that restart button, <laughs> that restart mechanism, or uh, uh, is based, right? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Titan creations called the Tolvir dwelled. Tolvir, yeah, I remember you guys. They were created to protect a Titan facility called the Forge of Origination, an extreme Yes, the Forge of Origination. Thank you. Of Origination. Yeah, basically this is the restart button <laughs> of this entire simulation. If things go whack on Azeroth, they restart the entire planet right here in this 
Forge of Origination. It's crazy. Extremely powerful weapon that could eradicate all life on Azeroth. The Tolvir also succumbed to the Curse of Flesh and patiently waited for Raden's return. But one day, they received a summon from their Mogu cousin to come visit their empire. Upon arrival, the Tolvir were stunned to see how advanced the Mogu had become. The Thunder King greeted them with open arms and toured them around his humongous empire. The Tolvir took notice of the abhorrent use of slaves, but, you know, they didn't really mind it that much. Besides, they were more focused on the protection of- Ah, uh, there, there's one more, um, a Genu, okay. ...of Titan creations more than anything. What the Tolvir did have a problem with was when Lei Shen told them that he ripped the heart out of Raden, their master, stole his power, and oh yeah, he also locked him in a basement in his palace where he's now sucking out his titan blood called Anima. If you Wait a minute, so he's still alive even after you've ripped, up, ripped, ripped out his heart? Wow, okay. Play the Shadowlands expansion before, you'll know that there's also stuff called Anima, which is the essence of all mortal souls. Blizzard originally said, oh yeah, these two Animas are kind of the same thing, and then they walked back on that statement. And now, there's two different things called Anima in the Warcraft universe that are totally unrelated. <laughs> okay. Anyways, in the novel called Shadows of the Horde, this Titan Anima was described to be so powerful that if you tossed it on a human, they would regress back into becoming a Vrykul. That would be cool. <laughs> and Leishen used it to make robots, torture cow people, and make new races by using it on lizards to create the Sarok and Trogs to make the Grummels. Oh, and yeah, Leishen planned on securing the Forge of Origination for himself so he could recreate all living things on Azeroth to serve him, I thought we were working for the Titans, Leishen. What? What's this now? Huh? What's this? Is this in the service of the Titans? Well, like I said before, I don't think the Titans will really care what's happening uh, with the internal politics on the planet as long as the planet has a standing army that's going to protect it from the Burning Legion or contain the old gods, <clears throat> you know, in their prisons on Azeroth. Other than that, I don't think they'll really care about what's happening uh, with the life forms that they've created or the life forms that are roaming around on Azeroth. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, they don't care. Including the Tolvir. Obviously, they were furious. They'd never bow to a traitor king like Lei Shen and stormed out of his empire. The Thunder King let them flee because he knew their choice really didn't matter. He'd take what he wanted by force. I am Lei Shen, slayer of kings and gods. You have made a grave mistake. But, um, Lei Shen, if you go to Uldum, won't they just use the, the Forge of Origination and just wipe you out? I mean, have you really thought about this? <laughs> you know, that's where the weapon of mass destruction is based. If you go there and they are there, the Tolvir, if you go there and the Tolvir are there, they can just activate the weapon and it's over. So, okay. The Thunder King and his Mogu army marched towards Oldham. Lei Shen was so confident he would lay claim to the forge that he invited the Zandalari not to help, but to simply watch as the Thunder King did what he does best. Oh, okay, so it's a demonstration to say if you fuck around, you'll find out. <laughs> Essentially, you know, you're my friend, but there's a leash on you. Be careful. Dominate all opposition. At the base of the pyramid, only a few Tolvir stood armed. Lei Shen let out a laugh. Is that all you can muster? Pathetic. Do you not realize under my rule, Azeroth will be cleansed of all corruption? All shall be pure in form. All shall be one unified force. And all shall bow to the Thunder King.
the Tolvir had edited the code in the Forge of Origination to only wipe out all life in Ulda. Wow. That's what I expected. <laughs> That's what I expected. I mean, honestly, you are going to their home base. Their home base has the weapon of mass destruction. The Forge of Origination. They just need to activate it. And you guys are all dead. What I did not foresee was that they were able to manipulate how much power can be released and in this concentrated effort of explosion it will only be contained uh, within the vicinity of the uh, Forge of Origination and not go beyond and go across Azeroth because that's what I was expecting. I was expecting th this entire explosion to consume Azeroth in some sort of way but they've contained it only within the uh, perimeter of the facility. So yeah, that, that's quite interesting. Um, I'm digressing here, but <laughs> you know, this reminds me of Stargate SG-1. I don't know if you guys actually watch Stargate, you know, or know, or you know of Stargate. Um, Stargate SG-1 in particular, the TV show. Yeah, there is a device that a very powerful ancient race created uh, that was also able to essentially rewrite uh, the basic understandings of time and space and life across the galaxy. Uh, yeah, th this device here, the Forge of Origination, reminds me of that device. And yeah, it's quite powerful, quite devastating. Really, it needs to be used by people who are extremely responsible. And... The Tolvia were responsible <laughs> in their use of this weapon. Yeah. It's not even a weapon, it's just, it's just a restart button. Thing <laughs> like Shen, his army, and the trolls in an instant, turning the once lush jungle into a barren desert. In the end, it was the Thunder King's hubris that led to his downfall, and both troll and Mogu empires would never recover from this massive blow. Turns out that threatening the Tolvir, who had access to a giant nuke, was actually not a good idea. Yep. The Tolvir then shrouded the now scorched land of Oldham in mystery to hide the forge from being claimed by any outside mortals ever again. But of course, Mist of Pandaria came out and Lei Shen returned. The Zandalari had used the ritual Lei Shen talked about, and they used their powers combined to take over Azeroth once again. And, uh, somehow they recovered his body after being blown up in a giant nuke? How? Uh, I don't know, stop asking questions. Point is, Lei Shen was resurrected, and his conquest continued once again. But, you know, not really a lot of lore happens here. I mean, he's just kinda back, trying to do the same thing again this time with a lot more trolls. And, uh, of course, we kill him again. I sought only to finish the work of the gods. Yeah, you say that, but now nah, the power went to your head, Lysian. The power went to your head. But will we ever see him return? I mean, he's been resurrected once, so why can't he be resurrected again? We need the Zandalari trolls to decide that, okay, we're gonna re, uh, resurrect this person again. You know, it depends on them. And how many of the Zandalari trolls still remember the incantations and the spells required to resurrect uh, Lei Shen again. And I'm assuming that those priests who resurrected him the, the first time are dead. They were killed probably by the Alliance forces or, uh, you know, during other events that are concerning with Zandala. Hmm. Well, about that. Um, you see, in Mr. Pandaria, there was this long quest chain for the legendary cloak. And uh, during this quest chain, you have to kill Lei Shen and take his heart and give it to Rathion. Who then eats it. So, uh... I... I don't think he's coming back. Wait, does that mean... Um... Rathian has the powers of Lei Shen, Like, you know, controlling lightning. And being as... Powerful in terms of his physicality. Like Lei Shen. I'm, I'm just wondering about that. Because 
the nobleshen consumed the heart of uh, Raden, and now Rathion is consuming the heart of Laishen. So doesn't the power transfer to him now? Hmm. But no matter. Lei Shen has continued to be a fan favorite in the lore community because he's a villain who took matters into his own hands. A villain whose motives were justified and only wanted to continue the legacy of his creators. And for me personally, has one of the most interesting stories ever told in the Warcraft universe. But I will agree, he's kind of an asshole. Someone save Keeper Raden. Someone. An impressive run. My heart hurts. I, I mean, I don't have a heart. It, it hurts. Raden, more like Rod. Don't leave me here, please. I've been trapped in here for like, like 10,000 years. I'm hungry. All right, guys. Yeah, that is it. Uh, let me just get the title again one more time. Uh, Warcraft's most overpowered king, Platinum Wow, made on the Platinum Wow YouTube channel. Sorry. Um, yeah, thanks to Doi Doi Valdalen. Hopefully, I'm pronouncing your name correctly there. I'm so sorry. Um, but yeah, the Thunder King. Wow. Oh, wow. He had such an interesting life, if I can say that, you know, in the beginning. Uh, how he decided that he's not going to follow the path of his kin, uh, the rest of the Mogan, in terms of this internal conflicts and fighting and killing of family members and destroying just in the pursuit of power. Uh, he decided that he's going to talk with management. <laughs> and management is the, uh, is the keeper... Uh, Raden. He's going to talk with management and ask them what's going on. Why aren't you leading our people anymore? Raden has given up. He's not doing his duty anymore. Uh, he believes that the Titans are dead, killed by Sargeras, and the Burning Legion or the Void is going to consume Azeroth. Um, yeah, that, that is quite interesting. I, I wonder what happened to him. Like, what, how did that come about? You know, how was Raden convinced that the Titans are dead, Sargeras is coming for Azeroth, or the Void is going to destroy uh, Azeroth? I'm just wondering about that. And why didn't the other Titans, the Titan Keepers, come to him and talk to him and see or evaluate what's going on with their uh, brother? Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Leishen decided that, you know what, if management doesn't want to do the responsibility i'm going to fire management <laughs> and, <laughs> and become management myself and that's what he did he uh defeated uh, uh you know raden in imprisoned him took out his heart ate his heart became powerful and started ruling azeroth uh, gobbling as much territory as possible uh, subjugating races uh, making an alliance with the zandalari trolls uh, finding a way to resurrect himself should anything happen to him, uh, you know, uh, where, where he faces death. And in his hubris, in his ambitions and arrogance, he thought that he could uh, enter into Ulden and, you know, get to the Fort of Origination and make Azeroth the way he sees fit. Uh, and, you know, he says that he was fighting for... Uh, the purpose of protecting this planet under the direction of the titans but i don't think so i think this was all for his own desire of power eventually like over time it was all mainly for his own power and his own desire to rule in the beginning maybe he did think about you know protecting azeroth and uh, doing the will of the titans but as he grew older as he grew more powerful as a king as he subjugated more uh, civilizations it got to his head and you know he was doing it for himself in the end uh, and yeah you know he was taught a very 
painful, long-lasting lesson <laughs> by the Tolvia. Uh, don't mess with us because we have the restart button. <laughs> we can just press it now and it's all over. And that's what happened. So yeah, it's quite interesting with this king, uh, the Thunder King. Uh, he truly is unique because not only was he a king of his race, but he was a conqueror. He was a conqueror on Azeroth. Uh, and yeah, he could have went far if he actually succeeded in taking over the Fort of Origination and his plans of re remaking Azeroth in his own image succeeded. You know, I, I think Azeroth would be really um, heavily secured should the Burning Legion or the Void agents uh, like Zalatath <laughs> were to come into picture and think that they can dislodge the power uh, of the Thunder King. I think they would have a tough time, really. Uh, but because all of Azeroth would become one monolithic, homogeneous society, I think it would be even easier for the forces of uh, the Void or the forces of the Burning Legion to manipulate, to predict how, uh, you know, the Thunder King and his entire new civilization would act. Uh, I think the reason why uh, the Burning Legion and the Void haven't really won success successively on the planet is because of the multiple, uh, you know, races and their ideas and their societies and everything that adds up to Azeroth. You know, with all these different peoples, uh, they couldn't really defeat this uh, diversity of forces. So if everybody was under one umbrella, like how the Thunder King desired, I think it would be far more easier for those forces to actually predict and to win against the Thunder King. So, yeah, his mind and heart was in the right place in the beginning, but towards the end, he just lost the plot. And probably it's for the best that he lost the plot. Yeah. Okay. That's it. That's it for today uh, with the uh, with Platinum WoW as well as... Let me see the title again. Sorry, guys. I keep forgetting the name. <laughs> Warcraft's Most Overpowered King. Yes, made on the Platinum WoW YouTube channel. Remember, if you want to check out the original video as well as Platinum WoW's YouTube channel, the links are going to be in the description below. If you like my reaction, please give me a like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Click on the notification bell if you want to be up to date with my latest videos. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank you again to uh, Doi Valdalen for the request. I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name. I'm very, very sorry. <laughs> All right, guys. That's it. Bye-bye.